Okay, so today we're going to take this image which I generated in Midjourney AI and using PhotoP turned it into this edit and it's going to be a step-by-step -step PSD layer-by-layer -layer guide. So before we get into it, I'll just say if you're not into Midjourney or you've got no idea what it even is, then don't worry, you don't need to know. The link to the download of the image is in the description box for you to check out. But all of you that are into um, Mid Journey or have experimented with it, then I'll also link to the prompt itself in the description box so you can follow along with that. Now I'm going to go through this PSD and this is going to be an example of a read, just a general basic edit and a retouch to an image, nothing special. But instead of going through technique by technique, which would take a long time, I'm going to put this into this ordered list, as you can see here, with my thought process and my steps. I've created this with layer comps to simplify it which will be coming out in a very separate, uh, for, sorry, very soon in a separate tutorial, exactly how to use layer comps. But for now, I'm just gonna talk you through it from my, from my thought process and what I would do to an image like this. So the first thing I'd do if I was making a lot of adjustments or if I was just demonstrating was I would make some notes. And this is just on a blank layer with, I just use a red brush. And as you can see, I've just put crosses on things I wanna get rid of. Um, and then on this area here, there's like a down arrow, which I just use and, and like a cross hatching really rough. I just use that to um, indicate that it needs to be reduced to like visibly. So darkened or, or something like that. So as you can see, what I've, what I've chosen to do here is anything that I think is unnecessary to the scene and distracts my eye from the subject, I want to either reduce it or get rid of it. Um, if it's not obvious what it is, if it's not part of the story, then it should really go. So we've got this napkin here on the table behind, that sort of out of focus ball, that bokeh ball up in the top corner, it's not really adding anything. And then in the right hand side at the top of the window, this white, this sort of white blob here again, it's kind of brighter than the subject's face, so it's detracting you. And in the background here, this large area that I've put a down arrow to sort of darken, I don't want to remove that, um, but I just want to make it less obvious. And then there's a small, there's a small little bit on the inside of his glasses here, which didn't come out particularly great. So um, that one I will get rid of as well. Right, so, so let me get back to the 100%. So then the next stage from that would be the cleanup itself. So as you can see from the original, the cleanup, I've just removed those imperfections, distractions, or minimized them in the case of this. And these are done with the clone tool. Uh, the patch tool, all normal kind of standard cleaning methods. For the bright object here that I've just diminished, that was done by a layer just with a darkened tone, just painted over it with a low opacity or flow. Nothing more complicated than that. It was just going to dull it out of the view to make it less obvious, but still keep some tones in the background. Sometimes you don't need to get complicated. Just a brush will sometimes do. No, no, not even any blending modes. And the next thing I, I wanted to do is to change his expression slightly. So I'm going to liquefy on this layer. I'm going to liquefy and just very, very slightly, just not make him grinning or properly smiling, but just change his face from just a slight a slightly concerned look there just as something a bit more neutral bordering on you know happy um you've got to be careful doing liquefies because to change expressions because it can look go bad very quickly and you'll see as well as part of that i've just nudged up his eyebrow slightly without distorting the glasses too much because again there's lots of little subtleties that change when you um when you try to move someone's expression slightly I wouldn't try and push it more than this and personally in a shot like that. Um, so the next day, so step five, I wanted to brighten the shot because it's quite dull at the moment and I wanted to bring some life into it. So I brightened it with a curve. Nothing special, as you can see, I've just grabbed it, pulled it up in the, well, just, just into the highlight areas here to the right, pulled it up and then I just pinched this down a little bit just to keep the shadows where they were very standard, um, nothing special to that at all. Very basic curve. And then I wanted to add a bit of color tone to the shot already. So I then added a color balance. As you can see the difference between the two. So I brightened it in that shot. And now we've got this slightly warmer tone added. Um, Cause I just felt it was suitable for this kind of environment. 
and I go into that and show you again. So color balance, it's just experimenting. So I normally go into the shadows. I've um, actually added some blue to the shadows and a little bit of green. And then I've offset that within the highlights. I've then pushed it the other way and I've put some yellow and magenta in the highlights. So it's pushing the highlight and the shadow color a little bit further away from each other, which always works quite well to make a little bit of extra interest. So then onto step seven, I've used the Super Bloom plugin, which you can access in PhotoP for free, which is really great. And I'm, I'm not gonna go into that now because there's a separate tutorial on the channel, which I'll put in the description box and link to on the screen that shows you exactly how to use this. But it's just really good at getting nice little atmospheric glows and um, extra sort of light effects and interest in the scene. And I just think that works really well. Now, after that, I thought it'd be quite nice to have some element of light coming through the window itself. So I've added this light flare, which was actually made in, in the photo P as well, in the text to image stable diffusion um, section here. And I literally typed in um, light flare on black background, um, which after a couple of attempts, it generated this and I've just angled it on a black background. I've just angled it and um, set it to screen blending mode, which then made it, um, got rid of the black and just kept this kind of light ray coming through the window here. And then one more step after that, I've created a color balance adjustment layer and clipped it to it. And how you clip it is when you create it, you hold alt and click on it and it clips it just to that layer. So it'll only affect the flare that we've created. And in there, you'll see I've just pushed the highlights to a lot to the yellow side to really warm them up. Um, I just wanna go back to that now. We go from the super bloom to the light flare, and then we've added that color to the light flare. So now we've got a golden sort of light coming through the window. <laughs> and then I wanted to just make the eyes pop a little bit. I didn't wanna to go too far. So on this eyes layer, it's just a little bit of contrast that I've masked in. You'll see that layer mask there, just brushed in over the eyes. That's a little bit of contrast. And then this layer here is just color dodge blending mode. And I've just gone and brushed just in the bottom half of the iris, just a little U shape, which just helps to bring out, um, just bring out the shape of the eye and make it pop a little bit. And I've used the fill percentage here to lower the strength instead of opacity, because on certain blending modes like color dodge, it works differently and you can get a more pleasing result if you lower the fill instead of the opacity. So I set that to, I think, 25, but you can adjust that to taste. And that was just white, sorry, on the color dodge layer. And then I've got one last step here, which is a merge and sharpen. So from here, I've just created a merged layer on top of everything and then applied some sharpening to it via Unsharp Mask just to bring out those details. So to create the merged layer, at the top of everything, you'd create a blank layer like this. And while that's highlighted, the shortcut is, it's a bit of a tricky one, it's Shift, Alt, Command, E, or Shift, Alt, Control, E if you're on a PC. And it will create, or it should create, a merge layer like that. So that takes everything that's underneath it and then just merges it into one layer at the top. So you can do destructive tweaks like sharpening to it. So a bit of unsharp mask um, on a low setting. So I would have gone sharpen, unsharp mask, and for something like this, the radius would have been pretty low, probably a pixel or less, and the amount would have been about 100, something like that, um, just to give it a little pop.